In the late 90s, I got really into the sound of the Hammond organ and Rhodes electric piano, probably through the acid jazz and neo-soul scene that was going on at the time. This led me to discover the amazing artists that were using these instruments back in the 70s. Of course, I wanted to learn and play these instruments myself, but owning the real vintage hardware was not really an option due to the high cost of these rare instruments. Also, I really wanted to use these sounds with my band at the time, and lugging these massive beasts around to gigs was not an attractive option. I tried all of the popular synthesizers and keyboards of the time in search of these epic sounds. I tried, for example, the Roland Phantom, Yamaha Motif, and everything else that was available. But they all fell massively short. The organs sounded terrible with awful rotary Leslie speaker simulations and weak Hammond tones. The controls on the synths at the time did not offer the real-time controls that were present and necessary on the real Hammond organs. The Rhodes electric pianos were equally disappointing. They did not sound warm and full like the recordings I had been listening to. The expressiveness was lacking and there was no detail in the sounds. Worst of all was the velocity switches in the samples with just a soft sample and a hard bark sample with an obvious and ugly transition between the two variations. I tried them all, even instruments costing thousands of dollars, but quite frankly, they were all rubbish. But then, in 2001, Swedish electronic instrument manufacturer Klavia released an intriguing keyboard that they called the Nord Electro. Before that, I was well aware of the brand, and really admired their innovative red Nord Lead virtual analog synthesizer. The original instrument had two sections an organ section with a digitally modelled Hammond B3 and Leslie speaker complete with innovative digital LED drawbars and buttons for all the essential organ controls. There was also the electric piano section, with a few variations of sampled Rhodes, Wurlitzer and Clavinet. To top it off, the icing on the cake was a simple but effective multi-effects processor modelled after classic stomp boxes that a keyboard player might have used back in the day. And that was it. No more, no less. No complicated LCD screen or menu diving required. Everything right there on the front panel it seemed like a dream come true. This, of course, made me extremely excited and I made a beeline for my local music store in Stockholm, Sir de Malm, called Estrad. Patrick, the staff member, kindly showed me the new keyboard and I got busy trying it out. I absolutely loved it at first sight and play. The sounds were incredible and the user interface was intuitive and quick to use. 
The piano sounds were expressive, enjoyable to play and sounded extremely authentic. Nord had succeeded where all the other manufacturers had failed. The only issue for me was the price. This was an expensive keyboard with the 61 note version coming in at about $1,500 and the 73 costing $1,800. It was, unfortunately, somewhat out of my reach. Fortunately for me, there is a thriving second-hand market for used synths and keyboards in Stockholm. Within just a few months, I picked up a lightly used Electro 1 73 with a sturdy flight case and immediately I started gigging with it. After just a year or two, Clavia released the Nord Electro 2 with very little differences apart from some internal improvements to the motherboard to improve reliability that plagued the version 1. I soon did a trade up from the NE1 73 to a brand new NE2 with the legendary soft case. Nord was the first brand to introduce a backpack case as far as I know. I was cycling to the gigs with a Hammond and Rhodes on my back. Just imagine that. I went on to purchase a NE2 rack, then a NE2 73, and in later years, another NE2 61, which I featured on my channel as my favorite synth ever. So my favorite keyboard of all time. Ooh, look at the cat hairs on this thing, it's gross. Oh my God. No wonder I was sneezing when I brought this thing home. Disgusting. Okay, my favorite keyboard of all time. Here it is. Yes, it is the Nord Electro. And more specifically, it's the Nord Electro 261. I then picked up a NE573, and now I have the NE661. As some of you might remember, I even built my own dual manual Hammond organ clone housing an Electro and an extra Fetar controller keyboard to play the lower manual. And then start to slide in the Electro. Actually, that's fitting in pretty nice, better than I remember. So, does it go in something like that? So, now what we have is uh, one sound down here. And a different sound up here. As you can tell, I really do rather love this keyboard. The original design concept of the Electro was to do one job well, which was emulating electromechanical instruments, meaning just organ, electric piano and clavinet. I distinctly remember the original marketing campaign, a Swiss army knife is not the best tool for the job which took a snipe at the bloated workstation synths of the era. But soon, 
By popular demand, Clavia added a quite diabolical mono-acoustic grand piano. But soon later, they added a half-decent stereo sampled grand piano, which you could load onto the keyboard. The cool. Sadly though, this led them to abandon their original design philosophy, and now the Electro has become the Swiss Army Knife, with every sound under the sun available. With every new feature added, the user interface became cluttered, even bewildering, with many shift functions, a LCD screen and menus to manage the new complexity. I always thought that this was a real shame. Personally, I feel much more fondness and connection to the earlier models. That is killer. But we can go even more wicked than that. Let me enable the wow. Take a listen to this. Isn't that awesome? And that is gonna, I mean, I've got my headphones on here and that is piercing my brains. That thing is so intense. Another complaint I have about Nord is that onboard sample memory is simply not enough. There isn't space to load all the available instruments from the Nord sample sound library in their best quality. This forces a compromise between number of instruments and quality. If you want a lot of sounds, then you'll have to install the small versions with fewer samples that simply don't sound as good. It's also tedious to download and transfer sounds from the PC to the keyboard. I think it would be so much better if everything was available on board from the factory. In this age of cheap, fast and high capacity SD or SSD storage, this is a baffling and inexplicable design choice. I've done some wicked solos using this clavinet sound. I also take exception to the fact that we still don't get a pitch bend, mod wheel, or even a basic synthesizer filter. For sure, it's not necessary for Hammond and Rhodes, but it's essential for all of the new sound categories and for when using it as a controller. Today, the Electro faces some very tough competition, in particular from Yamaha with their YC series, which beats the Electro in nearly every department, both in features, specifications and sounds. Nevertheless, I will always have a soft spot for the Electro, and when I sell mine, I've learned I will miss it and yearn for another. I'll always be grateful to the legend that is Hans Nordelius at Clavia for recognising and serving the needs 
of keyboard players all around the world like myself. He also deserves credit for pioneering a new category of instrument, the stage keyboard. Mr. Nordelius, thank you from all of us.